Let's have a word about Sadler's Wells. You've mentioned him already. And, and yeah. He was a character, I think you were saying. Oh, he was, yeah. He was unbeaten at two. Um, and then he, uh, at three, I declined to ride him. I rode um, a Mr. Prospector horse that really worked good at home. Anyway, George McGrath rode Sadler's Wells, and that was in the Irish Guineas. Mm. He won, made all the running. I only finished fourth. <laughs> you just had it in for Sadler's Wells, didn't you? Yeah. Quite <laughs> but then I rode him after that, and he yeah. won the Eclipse, and he won the Champion Stakes in Ireland. It's Sadler's Wells coming to join uh, pa Princess Patty. Close behind those is Ptolemyo towards the outside. Ptolemyo coming with a good run. But as they come to the two furlong marker, Adonijah bursting through on the outside with Lester Bigger. Ptolemyo in the centre. Sadler's Wells on the stand side. These three in line. Here comes Cassius Musen on Seattle Song. And Princess Patty is still there and so is Desirable. Coming to the furlong. It's Sadler's Wells pressed by Seattle Song. Sadler's Wells and Seattle Song. Princess Patty in third. Desirable fourth. It's Pat Henry and Sadler's Wells. Sadler's Wells from Seattle Song. Seattle Song. Challenging you all the way to the line, but it's Sadler's Wells just holding him. Sadler's Wells wins Seattle song second. Princess he was a very tough horse. Um, finished second in the King George. He was third in the French Derby. And then I, I think his last race he ran in the Ark. But he didn't stay a mile and a half. Right. He was very good in the Champion Stakes in Ireland. Mm. Phoenix, Phoenix Park in those yeah. days. Yeah. Um, and, and from what you're saying, though, there was nothing about him as a racehorse, other than the fact he was obviously good, mm. that would suggest he'd be one of the great stallions of all time. Well, you see, it was great. He, he was great by that great northern dancer. He was out of a mare called Fairy Bridge. She was, she was a, a hell of a mare. Mm. Um, and he was tough. And, and he just produced, produced, produced. Amazing. <laughs> All the, even, even on the flat, apart from the flat, that, you know, look at Isterbrake, won three champion hurdles. He, yeah. he was able to produce them over hurdles as well. We'll leave Pebbles and Dancing Brave for a little while. We'll come back to those two perhaps yeah. at the end of the, our little chat about horses. Um, one ride I reckon you'll have loved, and I haven't prepped you for this, Soleric in the 1997 Gold Cup. Oh, yeah, that was a great day. I loved it. Classic cliche going for back-to-back -back gold cups, now followed by Soleric, and Soleric, Soleric is the speed horse. His classic cliche from Soleric inside the final furlong. Classic cliche, Soleric. Election day is charging down the outside. Soleric switched inside as classic cliche pulled the whip. Soleric took over from classic cliche on election day, and Soleric timed it well to win. Classic cliche second election He was a horse that uh, pulled up in front. You had to get there late on him. He was an El Grand Seigneur over a distance. Yeah, but he travelled around a great that day, and he led me all the way. And and he uh, luckily it worked out just perfect because he he took me to the furlong marker, and then I was able to go. And he and he won nicely. Yeah. And on that day, actually, he ran right to the line, didn't he? I mean, yeah. He didn't pull up. No, he didn't pull up that day. He went for it. Bosra Sham. Oh, great mare, really good. Beautiful temperament, won the guineas. I don't know how she won the guineas because Henry did a, 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 an amazing job on it because she had a sore foot. Um, but he patched her up and he got her there. She won on the day. She hung uh, at the end of the race. Um, there was a steward's inquiry. Luckily, we kept it. But how he got there on the day, I don't know. It's just been a great trainer. A couple of sprinters I wanted to talk to you about. Um, uh, well, three, actually. Great commotion. Yeah. Caddo Genera and Sheikh Alberdu, all all three very good to you. Yeah. What do you remember about them? Well, Sheikh Alberdu was um, he was trained um, really well by um, Alex Scott. Um, he was good. He 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 won the Nonthorpe, and then he went to America and won. He's the only he's the only English horse that's ever won a, a, a sprint in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. Um, and he bowled it up. He won five lengths. House Buster with the bold challenge, media plan on the inside second. Here comes the English sprinter, Shake up Badu, and he runs by our champion. Robin Dancer moves in the second. House Buster has been defeated today, and here is Shake. Oh, Badu, and he's running away from the best American sprinters, and he wins by five. And Pleasant Tap gets... He started off as a handicapper, yeah. as a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Ended up winning the Buddhist Cup. Oh, amazing, and and we're talking about the other two. Um, 
great commotion. Do you remember much about him at all? Yeah. He I won, won the Golden Jubilee, or yeah. I think it was the Cork and Ori in those Yeah, days. he was a good little horse. He, um, I remember winning his maiden at Newmark, and they came in and he kicked me in the knee, and I, know, and I thought I'd broken my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Happy memories, then. Yeah. Caddo General was a good, really good sprinter. Mm. Yeah, he was. But he was, a, he was a proper grass horse. He would never have took to America on the dirt. Mm. And he had a real good turn of foot. And again, you know, it's turned into a good sire as well. Oh, yeah, he's done really well as a sire. Gets them at all distance. Great commotion, just getting ahead in front of Todd. Out in the centre, dead certain, boxing on well from LaGrange Music and Haunting Beauty. A hundred yards to go, though, it's dead certain out in the centre. And great commotion, they're fighting it out. Great commotion and dead certain, stride for stride. There's going to be nothing in this dead certain. Great commotion, great commotion, dead certain, nothing in it. Dane Hill. Yeah. Dollar horse. He, he, great sire, would have probably, if he was alive to n now, he'd be, um, he'd have t overtaken Sadler's Wells. You didn't get your percentage of Dane Hill, did you? No. <laughs> he, uh, Prince Carl had sold him to Coolmore. Um, he, uh, he was just a, gr a really good horse. Willie rolled him in the Cork and Oria. Ascot broke the track record. Um, and I won the, um, the big race on him at Haydock, the Vernon Sprint. With with a, with a horse like him, did again? Do you just know he's a natural sprinter type straight away? Oh did yeah. You can't stretch him out at all. Well, or? what happened when he was a two-year-old? He won the Acom as a two-year-old over six furlongs, and Jeremy Tree trained him, and then we took him to um, he went to Paris at Longchamp for the uh, Salamandre, which is seven furlongs. Yeah. He nearly killed me. <laughs> I dropped him in. What you know, big tank of a horse. They, you know, it's like in France, they, they go slow paces. Well, I was climbing over the back of them. I was just tearing the heels off horses. He, um, he didn't stay. So he, he, when they brought him back to sprinting, he, he, he just started winning. He'll be the first one. Of course, we remember Ashdown, don't we? Who used to... Yeah. I think he ran the Man, derby. The derby. And then came champion sprinter. Yeah, just Ray about. Cochran thought he'd win the derby on it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, oh, um, God. I'm always interested in you. It's always interesting for me how good two-year-olds can be who don't always go on. You won the Racing Post Trophy loads of times, um, including on Reference Point, which a lot of people will forget, of course, because yeah. won the derby for Steve. But one horse I just wanted to mention to you was Armager. Yeah. Who won the, the 1992 version and he was just about it. as good a two-year-old as you could get, wasn't he, Armager? He won it by eight lengths. Armager lengthening up for Edry has gone two lengths clear. Ivanka's in pursuit but sending out distress signals. These are clear of Zent and then there's a long gap back to Mukhamadov. But Armager is annihilating them in the racing post trophy. He strides inside the last 150 yards going five, six, seven lengths clear from Ivanka. Back in 30 Zent. Then comes Desert Secret. But Armager has stormed to victory in the racing post trophy. I just remember his white mm. socks and him just charging up the straight. It was like Celtic swing. He looked a champion. But then, um, as a three-year-old, he came out and he, I think he went in the D stakes at Chester. Um, he won, but he only struggled home. Yeah. He had an exaggerated action, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he wasn't, he was nowhere near as good at, when he, um, at two, he was, a, he was a star as a two-year-old. <laughs> then he went to Japan, but never did any good as a stallion. Another good one was Disview, but again, a bit like Celeric, for me, real buddy, winning the Sussex Stakes in 2003. Yeah, that was a great... I mean, he couldn't win it, could he? I mean, that was ridiculous, a, really. That was a thrill. That was a thrill. But he couldn't win a Sussex Stakes, could he? Well, he did, though. <laughs> it was a great ride, on the, it yeah. was one of your best, wasn't he, it? Yeah, it was my last Group 1 winner. Um, it was hilarious. Because, um, <laughs> you know, I just sat at the back and I thought, well, you know, I'll ride him to, to be third or fourth. And um, luckily, they went many a mile an hour and they all dunk, they all stopped and then got there on the button. <laughs> it, was, it was literally a case of you almost falling to victory. They, mm. they stop and you just say goodbye. Yeah. They went very fast. Yeah. It was a really... It was a yeah, it was a really fast run race. Mm. And that's that, that one in the race. The pace. And Richard Hannon, I imagine, good fun. Oh, great guy to ride for. Used to make me roll up laughing. He'd come in the van and he'd say to me, no good giving you any orders because you're taking on those of me anyway. <laughs> 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 oh, Richard. Yeah. yeah. In a slightly slurring voice, probably. But, as well. Yeah, but <laughs> trains 100 and plus winners every year. Yeah. Consistent, isn't he? I'd like to be a train horse like him. 
Well, he must train 100 plus winners almost as many times as you rode 100 plus mm. winners because that was a ridiculous amount. Um, let's get on to two biggies then. Let's let we've we've spoken briefly about Greville and and, and Guy Harwood dancing brave. Um, how did you find out Greville was going to be ditched and you were in? Because we had uh, the same situation, didn't we? That he although he lost the derby, actually Greville then went and won the Eclipse. Yeah, he won the Eclipse on him, um, and then just before the King George, he had a bad fall, you know. Right. And he twigged a nerve in his neck. So at the time, I was riding quite a lot for, uh, for Prince Carlet. And um, anyway, I got the ride in the King George. And uh, he won. But after that, Greville won the trial race on him at Goodwood. Yeah. And then um, I think it was the next year I was going to be retained by Prince Carlet. And he felt that he wanted me to ride him in the arc. And that's how I got the ride. So let's just remind you of the field for the 1986 Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. We had two crack fillies, Dorara, who'd won the Prix Vermeil, and Triptych, the first of her sex to win the Irish 2000 Guineas, and a subsequent dual Coronation Cup heroine. And then there were the boys, Sharastani, the English and Irish derby winner, Bearing, the Prix du Jockey Club hero, the French derby victor, and a Catanango who'd won the Deutsches derby. That's the German equivalent. It was some field, but then this was some race. Into the home straight, three furlongs to go. Throws down the big challenge to Baby Turk. It's Baby Turk next to the rails. Then comes the main, then a Catanango, then Shidari, followed by Shara Stani. Then Bearing making ground on the very wide outside and dancing brave on the extreme. Right of the picture, plenary asking for everything. A furlong and a half to go. And it's Shidari now who strikes the front. Dorara with the nose down. Bearing on the very wide outside with a bank face, Shara Stani. But here comes dancing brave. Firing down the centre of the track. And it's dancing brave now who's come to the pick up the running. Dancing Bray was uh, just exceptional on that yeah. day, you know. Talk us through the arc. I mean, you were, I some followed. people would say, in a ridiculous position. Mm. But then I followed the, the favourite all the way. Was well, that the, well, the second favourite. The, 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 the plan, yeah, bearing you'd won the French dog. Mm. I mean, was that your plan? Yeah. And to I, come wide? See, I was drawn out. Right. And then I, I just moved over, going up to the trees, um, just before the mile. And I had him in my sights all the way. But I knew that when I rode that horse in the King George, Guy never told me he pulled up in front. Right. So before the race, he comes in the way room and he says to me, what are you going to do in this horse for the arc? And I said, well, he'll be the last one to challenge. Did, did he pull up? Because he didn't pull up in front in the guineas, did he? I mean, over a trip, are you saying? He yeah. Just, so, just stretched him. Yeah, and he looked at me like I was a dead man. Right. He walked out and never said a word. So I know if I get beat, I'm in the yeah. <laughs> Sorry about <laughs> the language. But um, I knew I was going to ride him that way. There was no way I was going to ride him any different. Yeah. And he just, luckily, the horse produced for me. And he had a great turn of foot. After that? Is that, for a jockey, just an absolute high? You've, and that was oh, a great yeah. field, wasn't it, with Triptych and I think a Catanango. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was eight Group 1 winners hit the front, you know, like went sort of together upside in the last furlong. Yeah. They were spread across the And, and the he, he just poleaxed them. Well, the, the famous thing about the race is you're not even in picture for the, for the final. Yeah. Uh, the cameraman just Lost doesn't him. even see you <laughs> having a cup of tea. <laughs> having a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was, I mean, just a terrific horse. But of course, when you rode him in the Breeders' Cup, he just didn't operate at all, did he? Well, it was sad because um, they wouldn't, you know, in California, when it got hot, they didn't let the quarantine horses out till late. Mm. And it was really hot, you know, that, at that time. And, um, you know, that's why a lot of uh, the English horses didn't run that well at that meeting. Let's have a word about Pebbles then. Of course, wrote, originally Philip Robinson rode, rode Pebbles before it became a yeah. Sheikh Mohammed horse. She won the Guineas. Um, she, um, she was owned by a Greek guy, wasn't she? Um, yeah. Trained by Clyde Britton. Um, I didn't get to ride her till the champion stakes. Steve Cawthon rode her a yeah. few times. He won the Eclipse on it. Um, but I rode in the champion stakes. She absolutely bolted up. 
One of my favourite races, for those who haven't seen it, I mean, you had the Derby winner, Slip Anchor, in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. You had, so what, Comanche Run? Yeah, won the ledger. And Helen Street, I think, mm, as well. Yeah. And you come there like hard. El Gran Senor in the Derby. She came there hard held. Absolutely bolted up. Could you believe it, how well you were going? No. And then, luckily, um, you know, I got the ride in her that day. Um, and then um, she went to America at Aqueduct and... Um, Luckily, because it's a sharp little track, Aqueduct, um, she got the mile and a half. Well, her best trip was probably a mile and a quarter. Dangers hour between horses, looming boldly in sixth position. Pebbles still needs racing room. She's just three lengths off the lead. Then it's Theatrical and Lashkari as the field turns for home. Greenton charging after Teleprompter. Pebbles with racing room now and a daring move by Pat Ettery. And Pebbles has taken the lead. It's Pebbles now in front. Strawberry Road coming after it from the outside. Strawberry Road and Pebbles, they're dueling to the finish. Pebbles is game and determined. Strawberry Road driving hard. They're running out of ground. England Super Philly. Pebbles has won it. And Pebbles saving every bit of ground. Pat Ettery, a daring move at the top of the stretch. Moved her through a narrow opening as the field turned for home and went on to victory in this $2 million turf classic. The commentators are famous to say, you know, a daring move by Pat Ettery up the rail. Mm. Um, I took my chances. Balls of steel? Yeah, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I took my chances and I just kept creeping up the inside and, and it... Some days they work out for you, some days they don't. When you think back at your career now, do you, do you realise you're one of the, the greatest jockeys the world has ever seen? Do you, do you ever think to yourself like that? Not really, no. I just know that I had a good career and I loved every minute of it um, as a jockey. And um, yeah, I had a lot of success. I rode for a lot of good trainers. John Dunlop, Henry Cecil, um, Vincent O'Brien, um, Neville Callahan, uh, all, you know, I just rode for good trainers. But the facts are incredible. 11 championships, champion in Ireland, let's not forget, also in 1982. You were mm. champion apprentice, 1971. Yeah. 27 centuries, which was two more than Leicester Piggott managed. Mm. 27 century. Uh, 465 group wins, I think. Something like Something that. Like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Which was more than Leicester Piggott. Mm. Um, you know, 4,600 winners. I mean, it is an absolute... I mean, you're part of our legend series and, and there'll be few more worthy legends in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I could have gone on, but it would have been nice to have beaten Gordon, Sir Gordon Richards' mm. record. But it would have taken me a little while because I need to ride a 200 more winners to, to get by him. The second, yeah, um, yeah. You you ended what with four six three two, I think, mm. and and you'd have. That got... was the most anybody had ridden in in his his record, isn't it? The most yeah. that anybody had ridden in England. Yeah, but you were when you when you packed up, you were in pain, weren't you? I mean, it, you just, oh yeah, was my it. back was killing me. Yeah, and was that was just wear and tear? That's what the doctor told me, just wear and tear. Over the years, all the you know race riding and yeah, uh, travelling and. You know, just it's that's what it did. But you know what? Since I've had that operation, I've never had any pain since. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? I lost about five pounds, never put it back on again. Right. <laughs> God. Just think what the weaver would do to be able to. Oh, God, he's got. <laughs> he'd he'd have, to have a load of operations. Oh, the weaver, he got fat, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> In November 2015, Pat passed away. But for any fan of horse racing across the world, his riding talents will live forever.